those years was really powerful for me because during the time I was running so fast and working so hard, I really wasn't enjoying it or thinking about it too much. You know, I was just trying to survive and, and doing what we do and what we all do. But to have a chance to go back and really revisit it and look at the pictures and write stories about it, it was really beautiful.
involved mostly in dance, and then I did this fencing in college, um, and I took uh, stage combat classes in college through, through the acting school, so that was pretty handy. And then when I got to New York, I wasn't intending on becoming a stunt person. That was never in my mind. You know, when I got to New York, um, <clears throat> I took period sword technique classes just because I'm a geek, and uh, there were stunt people in there because they had to learn for their own purposes. And um, I sort of got dragged along into it. And really, that's, that's and then I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I can do this. It's good money. It's in my union. You know, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it, I, I consider it a real blessing. Um, I, I I think it made me a better actor as well. Just being able to handle myself professionally in the set. I have a, a, a real respect for behind the scenes. I know how hard everybody works to make something come off. I don't feel entitled like. Some actors do because they just don't know, or they don't care. Are there any stunt awards? There's so many acting awards. Uh, okay, yeah. Are there's are there my industry is so interesting because I, I feel both um, both actors and stunt people are condescended to in a lot of ways. And um, yes, the, there's acting awards. It was never because they wanted to honor the actor. It was because they're trying to get the film sold. You know what I mean? That's it. it there was never any altruistic. Uh, reason for it. And the, 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 the stunt awards, they didn't want to give stunt people awards because they felt like then the stunts might get too outrageous and people would start competing on that level. Which I understand, they co that happens <coughs> anyway. I mean the stunts are, we become competitive for in, in the marketplace as a, for the movie. They want the movie to be bigger and more. Like Jackie Chan. I mean, he accelerated stunts to another level because he did it all himself and ruined his body doing it. But, it, you know, his movies are amazing. Um, they, stunt people have formed their own awards ceremonies. They're called the Taurus Awards. And so they do, they do. And I think they're, they have now, they don't publicize it much, but there is an Academy Award for stunt coordination or maybe best stunt team. I don't know, it's just stupid, it's stupid. It's, you know, they treat you like children, but there's, there's things about my business, um, and I won't bore you all with it, but it's, it, it, I think, uh, I don't know any other professional group that is treated the way we are, actors are, where it's really awful. It's awful. And I'm talking about lawmakers, I'm not talking about everything else, because there's all kinds of crazy stuff. The lawmakers, have been, especially in Los Angeles, come down and, and created these random laws about what, what uh, actors can and cannot do. And it, <laughs> so true. Oh, I don't, I, I, are you really interested? Because I don't want to, because, uh, okay. Um, there is a publication called the Breakdown Services. Ba Breakdown Services lists all the roles for casting. Theater roles, television roles, film roles, you know, the, the casting directors or the directors themselves can put this out in the, in the breakdowns. Breakdowns come out every day. Actors are not allowed to see it. In what business do you know, it's against the law for actors to have access to this. What business does, uh, prevents a group of people from seeing jobs that are available? Do you think this has led to so many actors being producers and, and doing the dual role? No, Does I, that help? Well, no, what led to that, I really think, is, is technology. It's made it affordable because I think that has just exploded that direction. The other thing that, that's part of that is that there's so many actors now. There's so many actors. And, and our business, I think when I moved to L.A., there was maybe 35,000 actors. There's 120,000 actors now in L.A. And that's, that's just the, the union ones. That's not the non-union ones. So I think there's that. Um, actors do get the breakdowns illegally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could get in big trouble for getting them. But I just don't, you know, that, so that's a small piece of things. Out. There's, there's a lot of things like that. We're prevented access to casting directors. Uh, the casting directors have been harassed if they see us in a particular way. It's just, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Was, was that one just the break for breakdown services. Now there are there are other ways you can get the backstage, for instance, and there are some theater listings in that, but it's not the main roles. The reason why I was wondering was I've seen in the news a lot now that like New Orleans and Louisiana is trying to get a lot of movies. So I was mm -hmm. wondering, might that have been one of the reasons? Besides the tax. 
Well, the, the breakdowns have never been legal for activists, and they've been around for 30 years. So, but I, I know that the Louisiana has been awesome, and they, they've got um, great tax breaks. So states that have tax breaks are, are luring in uh, more production, which is brilliant. It's great. I, I don't understand why California doesn't do it. But anyway, that's all boring crap. <laughs> what gossip can I tell you? <laughs> Something a little more fun. Are you involved with anyone? Huh? Said, are you involved with anyone? Am I involved with anyone? I, I'm dating Joe Straczynski. I've known him for 20 years, and it got romantic about six months, seven months ago, last June, I guess. So and I, 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 when I went back through my stuff um, in my book, I, uh, I uncovered all these, like, the emails from Joe, and I, on one of his scripts, I'd circled his name with a heart, you know. <laughs> I've always loved Joe, and we just have never, you know, ships passing in the night, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what'll happen, but it's really nice. That's it. So that's why I'm going with him. He's, he has, uh, we started to to work together a little more on these, uh, we have these, all these production ideas, and that's part of what kept us in touch, and, um, you know, and then he just said he was pursuing him, which I didn't really realize. <laughs> he, his idea of pursuing me is acting me, asking me out to dinner like once a month, and we go out and chat, and then I go home. You know, like, really? How am I, what am I supposed to read into that? We've been doing this for twenty years. You know, but <laughs> anything else? What's the chicken? The chickens? No, we have in here have some photograph. Holding the chicken. Holding the chicken. That's my hen, Buffy. I have 30 chickens. I have 30 chickens. I really like chickens. In the big backyard? Yeah. Yeah. I have a bunch of chickens. I love chickens. I think they're hilarious. We don't eat them. I can't do that, but we have fresh eggs every day, and my neighbors buy eggs from me. So, yeah. And, and then I got Jenny started because oh, she yeah. wanted to have. Now I have six. <laughs> <laughs> So we were talking about predators. She lives in Florida, so we're talking about predators and how to protect the chickens from predators. And she said, well, what about alligators? I said, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the exact was, you have to worry about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just didn't even think about you. got alligators coming into your yard. Holy crap. That's like having dinosaurs come into your yard. <laughs> Can you imagine? Come on, you guys. You're being so patient and so polite. You must have something. Um, on Babylon 5, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's been stories about pranks and gags mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Do you have one that's really memorable for you? Uh, well, I did. I told you guys yesterday about Lita's lingerie. Um, I pulled a prank. It wasn't very... Well, it, I, I didn't mean to at all. But it just kind of inadvertently turned into one. Um, the best pranksters, let's see. Uh, well, definitely Peter and Andreas. Have you heard about the joke script? Ooh, okay. With Marcus? Mm -hmm. Okay, so where were we? We were at a big convention somewhere, like 3,000 people, one of those big conventions. And Peter and Andreas were on stage, cutting up as usual and entertaining the crowd. The next up to speak was going to be Joe. And so Peter and Andreas said to the crowd, okay, we think Joe's head has gotten a little big. And everywhere he goes, it's great maker of this and great maker of that. We want to take him down a peg. So when Joe comes in and he gets on stage, don't applaud. Don't cheer, don't applaud. Everyone always cheers and applauds when they say, don't do it. <laughs> so talk everybody down. So no matter what he says, don't applaud. So. <laughs> They leave, the crowd is reassembled, Joe is introduced, he, he, he's backstage, he's ready to come on, they say, and I'm afraid about my heart, Joe Straczynski, and he starts walking out on stage, and it's like crickets. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks around, and nobody's making a sound. And he said, hi, just in case they didn't understand. I'm Joe Straczynski, I created Babylon 5. And one guy went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking around, you know, 
everyone's sitting there, and he sees way in the back of the auditorium, Peter and Andreas go, just crack it up, and he's like, okay, all right. <laughs> and you don't mess with Joe. He is the patience of Joe. He will wait forever, but he will get you back. So months go by, and nothing, you know, Peter and Andreas, we're a little nervous, nothing happens. I, we would get our scripts delivered to our door. Um, a little bit in advance of when we were going to shoot them. And um, I get this script. I'm not in it. I'm not in that episode, but I get the script anyway. And I'm reading it, and there's a scene between Peter and Andreas. i trying to remember how it goes. But, but uh, Peter and Andreas, so they're, uh, Londo and Jakar are talking, and um, Londo says, well, it's getting quite late, and Jakar says, do you have to leave? And Londo says, well, no, I don't. And then they kiss. <laughs> so I read a few more scenes. You know how they put in there's a, there's a Franklin scene, and there's a Claudia and Bruce are talking about something, and then the, then the next scene, Shakar and Londo are in bed. <laughs> and they talk. They profess. They talk about their love for each other, and. So, I, I know, I call Claudia. Do you, yeah, what do you, I don't know, oh my god. <laughs> I thought you were gay, I thought you were gay. You know, <laughs> no, I guess it was Lana Del Lando who was gay. You know? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so I, I evidently, I, again, I wasn't shooting that, that uh, episode, but um, I was shooting the previous, and I was up at the hell broke loose. Uh, Andrea's agents called, Andrea's agents <laughs> called, you know, Peter's up, they're called, they're, everyone's freaking out. And, and Joe had went, even went to the extreme of having um, Andrea's fitted for a bare chest, <laughs> which they eventually did use, but he actually, he did it for the script, you have to come in and get cast, we're going to make their bare chest for the naked scene. And, 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 and <laughs> Really tweaked him out. Yeah, I have that script somewhere. I got it. <laughs> so that that was probably one of the best ones, I would say, one of the best jokes. You know, I wrote about my, my Lita's lingerie, and it wasn't it wasn't nearly as good as that. Um, but I already bored everybody with that yesterday. So. Uh, anything else, you guys? They gave me the, the signal. I'm going to be at my table until 2, and then I split for the airport. So come by if you want and say hi. Uh, thanks again for having me here. It's been really great. Oh, I asked everybody yesterday, if, if you're on social media, tweet or Twitter or, or Facebook, um, about Babylon 5, about talking to me, about talking to, you know, anything about Babylon 5, we're trying to sort of raise awareness to see if we can't get other projects done. But don't mention that. Just, you know, mention, just talk about, about just, yeah, just make it seem like there's, you know, random interest in that one. I appreciate it. Anything else? Somebody was sort of raising a hand? No? Were you? Oh, I was just, I was just wondering, you acted in a of roles. Um, do you have any favorites? Well, Lita was, I loved having, I loved the family of Babylon 5, and I loved the project. I mean, every, that was all great. But Lita was a hard little person to be in. You know, because she wasn't happy, and it was, and think bad things kept happening to her. But um, I, I, I loved Night of Living Dead. That was awesome. But I think my, uh, my all-time favorite was I was Rosalind in As You Like It, the Shakespeare version of As You Like It. I was in uh, the Riverside Shakespeare, and that was just amazing. Being on stage and, and just you know having a role like that as an as an actor, yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on a Sunday morning.